we've always been committed to uh, sustainable green home renovations and ultimately a, a longer term goal of being net zero, um, meaning totally weaning ourselves off of fossil fuel. Um, and so the first step of that um, long term goal was to uh, insulate our home, figure out how we could conserve as much energy as possible, um, sort of create this culture of energy efficiency. We live with we live with uh, at any time two to four other people. Um, so really making it uh, a part of our lifestyle within the home. And then from there, uh, taking the next step, which was um, installing solar panels and aiming to install as many solar panels as we could to cover 100% of our current electricity or electricity of the time. So again, for an average of five adults, can we cover the electricity use of those five adults? Um, this house is like, when we bought it, it was 101 years old. And you know now it's a couple more than that, but um, it's amazing the the techniques that have been developed to sort of retrofit buildings like this, the blown in uh, cellulose insulation, you know, where you don't have to comp compromise a big uh, section of your wall or, or anything like that to install insulation. We are in a designated uh, historic district, and that is something that we did have to um, work with uh, during the installation of the solar panels. And um, it was a very, yeah, I think it was a very educational process for us, as well as you know potentially for the the commission, um, in the sense that um, we were one of the first uh, single-family houses to to pursue that in this area. I think. Probably our average like monthly gas bill would be somewhere between a hundred and two hundred dollars in the height of the winter. Again, it's worth noting. So the house is about uh, twenty seven hundred square feet. With um, this winter, we had six adults. And then, so yeah, and so this is where the comparison to the neighbors had would come in too. Is that we would talk to? I'm thinking of one in particular. Um, who said their bills would be in the 800s for a similarly sized house. And right. they're using a boiler. We have a high efficiency gas furnace that's uh, forced air, but um, I guess it's sort of a head-to-head -head comparison. It's not unheard of, the 800 yeah. plus bills. The big project that we did with a contractor for the air sealing and insulation was I think just over six thousand dollars, and that was filling every single exterior wall with cellulose, spray foaming the knee walls in the attic uh, where we have our finished out living space, um, and filling all the attic floors with cellulose as well, um, and then also um, uh, basement work too for rim joist air sealing with spray foam. And a lot of other stuff and so they um, at the time there was a rebate program through uh, DTE and Better Buildings for Michigan mm -hmm. or something like that yep. and um, so I think that it was more like an eight thousand dollar project before rebates um, but yeah they calculated a, a payback period for us as well as part of that and I think they said it was around seven or eight years mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me years um, we were resource constrained in the sense that we had to think about our finances for this. We knew we were committed to it, um, but on top of all the available programs, we also recognized what an important investment in renewables it was here in Detroit, where, you know, it's unlike in Seattle, we could actually uh, aff somewhat <laughs> afford to buy a home in the city. And so given, given the prices of homes in Detroit and then the incremental really investment of, of doing something like solar that's going to be a forever investment, right? Like after we get that ROI after the few years that um, you know the, the payback sort of kicks in, we have free green electricity as long as we live in the house. So I, I, I kind of want to frame the conversation in that because we, we didn't start this off as we have unlimited resources, we're just going to install as many panels as it takes to, we, we were being as, as you know thoughtful and deliberate as we could about this and also talking to our neighbors in the process just so that they were engaged and they knew what we were doing. Uh, we, we know this isn't something that like, you know, it, we're trying, I guess what we're trying to say is 
it, it can be for anyone if there's, you know, concerted, concerted teamwork around understanding what's available to you. And so what we have are 12 uh, 270 watt panels on our house roof, which is a south facing orientation. Um, and then six additional panels on a carport that we built in the backyard, pretty much exclusively for putting additional panels on. Um, you know, it does keep the snow off the cars and whatnot as well. But um, and so altogether, it's 4.86 kilowatts or five, you know, five-ish kilowatts. We do have about a year now worth of data and I think it's hitting about 80% of our power and so that's a house of like Alessandra said that's a house of about five people um, on average and we are always working on on conserving more um, we have uh, nothing Nothing official, but we're always yelling at people to turn the lights off if they're leaving a room. <laughs> but they also like do that. it themselves. And they've learned too, as well. To, and it's nice to, to, to see that they, they do it in other places now, too. <laughs> yeah. After all the rebates, our whole system was around 11,500, almost 12,000. Mm -hmm. And we've estimated it'll probably take about 10 years to earn that back. So, 10 years from 2013, we can say we're using totally free green electricity. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're trying our best just to live out our values in our home, share it with our neighborhood, and then maybe where possible, try to encourage a different approach to things that are happen happening as usual that have led us to, you know, maybe the less preferred path. And it's true too that people are just so literal. They don't believe anything is possible until they can see it happen at least once and so that's the other thing is it's even if it's not um, you know we all hope it's the first of every house getting solar but um, even if in the meantime it just serves as look there's somebody doing it it's not it's not impossible there's so much so much going on in the city right now that it overwhelms me to think about where to start with how Detroit can play a role in the solar revolution. Um, but I think it's it can be very subtle. It can be as simple as there are so many people restoring their homes or renovating their homes. Um, can we rethink what renovation looks like? That's 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 the first starting point. And renovation again doesn't have to look like a hundred percent you know solar powered household on day one or year one. It can be very small things. Um, but I think if we just start changing the conversation around renovation, uh, services provided by contractors, you know, if you think of it as a business opportunity, if more contractors were trained in green jobs or green construction jobs that they could offer these kinds of services to the households um, restoring their buildings, then then where would we be? So so I definitely, you know, I'm a, I'm a proponent of the triple bottom line where we have to take care of people and planet and community wealth, I'll call it, our community prosperity in order to make change. So once you have those, those elements in place, I, I think it becomes, you know, I think it becomes the, the, the opportunity lies in changing those those day-to-day -day choices.